Crownfall. <laughs> I guess, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. I, my mystery is solved. My brain allowing me now to focus on the things that matter most. This game, number one, <laughs> Shopify versus Atlantic City. It's going to be good stuff. Shopify maybe goes looking for a first blood with the smoke. Visage teams love to do that. They might also just try to protect the, the camps for Chen. Something you'll see some teams do is you actually go invade the enemy safe lane, go play some sentries. Though currently, Atlantic City seems fine just hanging by their tower. If they go for a late smoke, I think this observer is going to scout it out. Oh, yeah, they should see this. Well, we'll see. They're all, I mean, they're going to stay together. I don't think either of these teams are going to connect on these. 30 seconds to battle. Scam's going to go check for the observers. Not going to find anything there. Uh, I mean, they ping the other side. I mean, they're, they're, they know, right? They're like, all right, if it's not here, it's going to be on the other side. They've done their homework. So. As the rune battles will not happen, we will simply just grab our bounties, head to the lanes, and both teams are kind of picking out exactly where the wards are, which is quite quite interesting. Like they've definitely like said, definitely done their research, kind of known a lot of like how they feel about placing their wards with these specific heroes. And Yopaj is gonna struggle in the mid lane a little bit on the Earth Spirit these first couple of levels. Well, I say that Chen has brought his minion mid and he is going to start mana burning the tinker. Is he actually gonna do it and keep it here? We always talk about this and then no, no one ever does it. But it'll really help out the Earth Spirit. Yeah, he actually gets one deny, which is quite nice. Um, Preventing the level two out from Copy right away. I mean, normally, Copy didn't want that creep wave to crash into his tower. So, because ideally you want to use the laser to secure last hits and denies, but because of this, uh, it actually eh, killed the creeps a little bit faster than I think he expected. Nice. But we'll see. It, it, it's going to push all the way to the enemy tower. So, Yopaj either is going to tank a lot of damage here or it's going to be a. Uh, you know, pushing back the other way, essentially. I want to know what song he's sharing with us. I know. Uh, you can just use your imagination. I think earlier we said it was the StarCraft soundtrack because it's such a banger, like the Terran soundtrack. You think soundtrack. he restarted the playlist for the new yeah. series? Or he's like, he's, like on, on. he's now using like the Zerg soundtrack. Yeah, he's, he's, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the Brood War Zerg soundtrack now. He's playing Luna. It's got to be Terran. Does it make sense? That's true, actually. Oh, he's got zoo heroes on his team, though. That's like a Zerg thing. Ooh, Copy in trouble. He's level two on Yopaj. He's going for the body blocks, and that mana burn creep actually causing a lot of problems for him. All right, really good stuff from Skem to just put a little bit of emphasis on like helping out Yopaj in mid in a little bit of a difficult matchup. So it's going to end up paying off quite a bit because those first few waves are usually very good for the Tinker. Yeah, I wonder if they discussed this, knowing that Tinker was likely to come out, how you could address it in... Well, it can have to be... Like, Tinker can have some really good matchups. And even though Earth Spirit will be good versus Tinker later, the lane is still annoying. Melee versus range, the blind... So this idea to send the, the creep over, as well as bottom, like even though we talked about uh, Doom being good versus Chen, it's still, like you still have a Luna and there's a Clockwork 4. So uh, this lane is fine without the creep. And maybe it's even better because you're not giving a free creep to Doom to just eat yeah. uh, without even have to go looking around for one. I think that's the other part of it that I hadn't really considered is the fact that, yeah, it prevents the Doom from just eating your creep for free. And he's just constantly sending a mid. He denies the water rune with it. He burns more mana out from copy. And it's just giving Yopaj a huge advantage in these early waves. God, I would be so annoyed if I was copy right now. 
this little blue satyr just keeps walking up and stealing so much mana. Like a laser is worth of mana every time. Oh, is he gonna creep drag with it too? That would have been sick. Uh, maybe trying, but just a little too late. Or maybe looking for couriers. Yeah, he's looking for courier, I think. It takes forever to kill a courier with a creep, though. Yeah, it's true. It's true. I think he wanted to creep dragon. He was just like a second off. Mm, okay, okay. A little bit of hockey issue oh. potentially. Oh, maybe wait, sending it for the bounty rune actually. But it's actually oh. dead because it grabbed the range creep aggro. I think the bounty okay. rune deny could have been good. That'd have been nice, Tinker yeah, because he bottle. hasn't been able to get water runes or anything. Yeah. Ooh, interesting. Lelis does not get the uh, rune over Skem there. Or not rune, the uh, Lotus. Skem? He's got some fast clicking. We saw him beat some mid players for like the wisdom rune clicks yesterday. The micro on the the creeps. The fast button press in here. So one thing I'm already noticing based on the CS, if we kind of ignore the cores for a moment, it's the Nyx Assassin. Once again, starting to creep up in the last hits. This is what always ends up happening with Hellscream. And it's not going to surprise me too much if he ends up having like a, a eight or eight or nine minute level six again. Is what typically happens for him when he gets this hero. Focuses on his own farm a little bit. Yeah, it's... It's something that's really cool with Nyx, but you can only really see it in the pro scene. Like in pubs, if you're off in the jungle creep dragging and then like blasting creeps, your your offlaner's tilted out. So uh, I'm glad we get to see it in the pro scene at least. Very creative with the mind flare. Another denied water rune from Skem and another mana burn as well. So just continuing the aggression to cause issues there. Hellscream topside. He does have an impale. Blood grenade is out. He's going to finally throw it as well as committing the Lotus and the stick. But the first blood goes to Yuma on the Dragon Knight. A good commitment. Midline. Yopaj. He's not quite level six, but he's just continuing to apply a lot of pressure here to copy. And he's going to fort this. They're going to have to TP in some heroes. Yopaj. He's going to roll away. An early defense matrix uh, as well, coming out from copy. I think he was expecting that dive. And I, I actually think that might have been a kill, but Fly's TP, I think, got canceled by a, an impale from the Nyx. Otherwise, maybe that roll hits the Crystal Maiden, and then they can run him down. But yep. some very much needed rotations. Otherwise, that's looking like a solo kill. Though maybe he's hoping there was more fighting in the side lanes because there's been no bottle refills from the supports, but the satyr has been denying him his runes. Uh, so he hasn't been able to use the spells like he wants to. Actually has to just walk home himself. But he That's is sad. five and a half, so soon it won't matter that much, right? He'll just he'll just use keen conveyance to go everywhere. The Visage is definitely struggling in CS here. They're going to rotate top slide. They have Lelis on the clockwork. Off the marks for the moment, but he does have battery assault. Now they're going to be a little bit afraid of some teleports coming in as Chen coming from the top side and now Earth Spirit. The TP into the tower. Roll does connect. Yo, Paj, try and just finish off Lelis. Boulder kick as well as some soul assumption should end up doing the trick. Does he have a purge creep? He does. Wow. Not well, anymore. he did. I don't know where it went. Back into the void. A level two clockwork. Not too painful of a death, but that was a death toll kill. So the, the money's going to start printing. Oh, copy, copy mid lane. Oh, he does get the dispel, forward. which is kind of nice, but he is in a lot of trouble. Nice cogs out from Lelis, but it's not going to be enough to save him. Okay, that's actually a neat trick to deal with the magnetize. That's true, a nice nice addition to it. Translocator, he could have been lucky and been teleported up or down the cliff. Maybe he gets to live, but yeah, wasn't quite the best angle. And off of that, Yopaj, I like it. Faking with the illusion rune, uh, sending him over. Good, get this wisdom. Is this a double wisdom rune? Yeah, that's huge. Fly needs this kill. Does he have the spell in time? Nope. 
And Visage is actually rotating up there as well. He's going to try and just TP to safety, though. So bottom lane, Gunner sidesteps the roll, but can he TP out in time? Okay, nicely done. He can. Good sidestep. The Wisdom Rune steal. Lullis has been doing a lot of creep dragging and rotating around. Now having his Wisdom Rune stolen, he's going to be very underleveled. This is actually so much of a slower paced game than what we saw last series. We were already <laughs> approaching 20 kills and everyone's super overleveled. This time we, we have a lot of minutes. Yeah, this time we have a lot of underleveled heroes, uh, specifically the supports. But it should be a little easier for Shopify Rebellion. One, they got both Wisdom Runes, but two, their supports can actually farm using uh, Mind Flare and then the, the creeps. Uh, Clockwork in the early levels really has terrible farming. Crystal Maidens is pretty slow as well. Part of it is like a sacrifice from the, the Chen. Like he's sacrificing his own farm a little bit to do this, but it's paid off because you've slowed down Tinker and the supports are also struggling on the side of Atlantic City. So. I think you're pretty okay with how things are going at the moment on Shopify, and they're trying to give some much-needed experience to these supports in the mid lane. Copy is already in the triangle, trying to farm up some Ancients and some hard camps there. I think they've blocked the hard camp, though, so... Fortunately for him, that will not be respawning. Oh, he's putting his Mud knows. Golem in the corner? That's so sneaky. It might get accidentally farmed by by the uh, machines oh it does oops <laughs> but i love the idea in this case you might actually just be feeding extra gold copy might be he's like where's all these last hit noises coming from it's like i'm hearing money uh i love the idea though you know exactly yeah. what he wants to do he just wants to farm right now and in that Mid sense line. the fact oh sorry go ahead doesn't matter no no yeah it would have been more interesting um in this game, it might be less painful that the supports are underleveled because you really are just in this like chill and farm period. You want the Aghanims on the core tinker. Doom, you know, slowly gets more money over time. Maybe they finally find a kill on Shen. That's, That's a our nice one. Fourth kill of the game. Ten Yay! Minutes in. You say it with me, everybody. Yay! Get okay. a free kill when we uh, get to five. Yep, yep. So, did I see a blink dagger on the tinker? Is that what I yes, saw there? Yes, he's got his blink, and with that kill, he's got a staff of wizardry on the way to the eggs. So, Copy, despite the attempts to slow him down in the mid lane, is doing what he does best on this tinker and farm towards that Aghanim Scepter. He is neck and neck with the Luna now. A lot of it's going to come down to how Yopaj and Amaterasu can take advantage of these early aggressive heroes in the next like five to ten minutes because they have to start connecting to make some big plays well i say that doom bottom lane they brought the visage he's somehow just so fast but they will be able to drop familiar number one there's the eclipse as well all right that'll do it top lane Get that looking for the next assassin going. They're actually predicting this as the Earth Spirit is here now as well. Hellscream gets caught from the Dragon Tail. Yopaj comes in with a Shield Rune as well. A big Magnetize onto two, but can he keep the damage going as the Barrier's gonna help out quite a bit for now, but Lelis will end up burning down to it. Roll on forward aggressively here, looking for Yuma. Hits him with the Urn, but Tinker, he's getting found on the backside by the Visage, and he he's in trouble. I don't think he's, he's doing, doing his best matters. here to clean up these familiars, but he's not making it out. A double kill for Yopaj and a really good rotation from Amaterasu to secure that. Is that his third death toll kill, I believe? Well, so assist. He's actually three assists, but it still counts. You still get the money. Yeah. Looking for another, actually. Even TP down here. Spirit Vessel for Earth Spirit. Going to be very good versus the, the Dragonite. Even Doom is pretty tanky. So I wonder if the uh, Defense Matrix Dispel might be a little problematic for that. Yeah, that's something we're going to keep our eyes on for sure. Ooh, Fly. He denies the rune. It's going to cost him his life here. This is another pickup for the Visage and a lot more gold stacking up from Death Toll. 
Blockwork's gonna put his body in front of the enemy team. Like, hurry up and finish this stack. They're coming. <laughs> oh no. He wants his six from these uh, these ancients. Yeah, he's gonna get it. They could look for Hellscream with this now. Look shot in as the cogs. That's gonna trap him in place. Sentry already in, already set. It'll be a pickup for Compy. So a nice use of that quick level six. Not quick, but you know. Quickly used after Quickly getting his used. level six. Yeah. Go for a push in the mid lane. I don't think they're going to force it too hard. Again, just kind of waiting out that Aghanims on the Tinker, which he's over halfway there, about 1,200 gold left. Another minute or two. Drums popped here from both teams. Lel is trying to get away from the Visage. Roll, not going to connect. There is going to be a barrier from the Tinker if he wants to try and save him. But they see the march. They know there's no pushing into that one, so they will back away. Nice disengage. They have two sets of drums on the side of Atlantic City, both on Gunner and Clockwork. Hmm. Well, I guess it's not so bad to overlap with the Doom because he could just yeah. sell it off later. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Uh, oh yeah, he did. I thought for some I, he had gluttony in the draft screen, but it looks like he changed at the end, so makes sense. Fly, going to get dove in the mid lane. I feel like that's going to be happening a lot here. Bottom lane, the Doom, it's onto the Visage, but they don't have the catch. The familiar drop was perfectly timed. And now Yopaj is going to be looking for Gunner himself, kicks him back. There's the Eclipse. The damage is overwhelming. They get themselves another, and Hellscream trying really hard to find Copy here on the Tinker. The Boulder Kick's going to connect. Copy's going to go down. <laughs> Gets a familiar Very before he goes. Kills. Yeah. Should be able to get that Tier 1 tower, I think. They just run at it with the familiars and the, the Chen army. So slowly opening up the map, and you... <laughs> I'm not trying to BM here. My bad, Lelis. Is all good, honorable game here, everyone. <laughs> um, but I think uh, getting these towers is very nice versus the Tinker. Admittedly, it's a core Tinker, though, so he's going to be level 12 soon, and then he can just teleport to the creeps. But removing these teleport locations versus the Tinker does slow him down, and the rest of the team. Uh, looks like this really nice is going to get slowed down here. himself. They're going to lose Fly here, most likely to Skem's army. Well, yeah, they've got the little rock toss there from the Golem shards. He should tip and then type intentional. <laughs> <laughs> I mean this. <laughs> I'm coming for you. Right, Copy's got his eggs. I want to blink on Dragonite as well. So this might be a uh, really nice timing to go together. Uh, I believe they there's already a smoke on Lelis. Yeah. It's go time. They see, they see the Nyx Assassin. He's running a reward sentry. Lelis is going to walk up, find him, trap him inside the cogs. He gets that spike Carapace off and... He's actually going to make it out for now. They lose one familiar, actually. And comes the really nice magnetize here. Once again, Gunner trying to enter the fray. They take down Yopaj so fast as Hellscream. Got to be careful. But another Eclipse for Mr. Gunner on this Doom. He's going to go down the Aghanim Scepter of the Tinker. Starting to do some work, but so is this Luna. A really nice spike. Carapace into a stun. But Copy, he's still sitting pretty. They managed to trap the Luna off onto the side of the Dragon Tail out from Yuma. They've got to get him out. Can they? Oh, he didn't have vision for the laser. He didn't. Oh, my goodness. That was so close. The downside with this ward spot, the, uh, the tree line blocks it. It makes it sneaky, but actually a little unfortunate for them in that case. Got a haste rune on Yopaj. That's a good one. That fight could have gone really well for Shopify if Yopaj gets to live a little longer. That Magnetize was on all the heroes, but just gets killed off without being able to refresh it too much. I really do like Yuma's decision this game to play less of a greedy build and play more active and allow his Tinker to kind of be the pseudo carry of the game, right? Um, Doom also going for a BKB. So they're, they're definitely going to try and match the aggression that Shopify is bringing. Right now, though, 
A little bit of a backfire. They're going to get the mid tier one tower. There's a 4k lead, but most of that is just in the tower difference that they've been able to take every single tier one. Thanks to the familiars and the Chen army. Hogs. He is fighting an entire war of his own, but the Blink the Dragon Tail is going to be able to find the Visage here. Nice freezing field, but immediately canceled, and a huge impale onto three. They're going to try and get the familiars out. They clean up one as well as the Chen army. You don't lose anything on the side of, sh of uh, Atlantic City, except you did pop freezing field dragon form. Is so farmed this game actually. Three and O oh with two hundred and thirty-five last hits. It's two thousand gold over the tinker. The Luna, he's so rich. Wow, that's actually nuts. I did not think he had that many last hits. That is that is <laughs> that is insane actually. Uh, Tomato is such a good farmer though. Like, there's a lot of cases we see him have a tough time in lane. You look away for two minutes and like, wait, how do he get to the top net worth? How did he do that? No, it's 2,000 gold advantage over the Tinker. Um, bottom lane, Hell Scream's going to scout out a rotation out from Atlantic City, but they're going to smoke back the other way now, see what they can find. Still no Blink or BKB on the Doom, so you're going to rely on your clockwork to find the initiation. They did see Skem for a second, but their ward has now expired. And the smoke's going to pop. They throw the drums. Flare is out. Hookshot Ooh. off the mark. Gunner, will he just drop the Doom? No. Well, he might just get his pick of the creeps, though. That's unfortunate there for Skem. Well, you get to live, so... Sometimes yeah, you gotta be a little it. sacrifice. Chen's not a benevolent, uh, you know, god to these That creeps. ain't his thing. Uh, unfortunate hookshot, miss. I'm gonna guess it had something to do with the high ground, low ground on the cliff. Sometimes you, you click an angle you think works, but it's... You know, it's a little funky. I don't know. But that is very unfortunate. Mid lane. Yuma, I mean, he's just tickling here, doing a little bit of damage. They know the 20 minute power rune's coming, so Shopify has brought the numbers. They want to secure this one. And it's going to be topside shield rune to be bottled up by Yopaj. I thought we might see uh, more fighting with those item timings we talked about earlier, but seems they're still okay just slowly progressing through this game. I did mention earlier, I think the, the scaling's a bit better for Atlantic City. I don't know if that's true or not. That's just my rough feeling versus a Chen. The scary thing is a Nyx in the late game is really good at finding heroes. Yeah. But still, you have Doom, right? Which is that's the thing, yeah. also strong in its in its own way. See them finally make their rotation into the Roche pit with the help of Visage and Chen. This should be very easy. So first Aegis will go into the hands of Yamato, Yamato, Tomato, whatever you want to call him. Uh, and with this, give him a little bit more space to continue farming. He's going, he's queued up straight into the Conda, so he does not want to BKB yet. And I think now that he has an Aegis, and he is already level 17, he can very easily justify that decision. Top side. Uh, no, no gank. Okay. Well, they're looking, but it's a little deep. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. I'll scream, keep an eye on them. His invis is about to fade, though. They know something's up, but guys, there is a Nyx here somewhere. Hookshot in. They actually find Yopaj on the Earth Spirit, and they get the Doom. He is absolutely dead. The rest of the team just needs to get out of here. Yuma's going to walk onto the high ground, which he might really quickly Waves. regret. An absolute ravage into the Eclipse. 
That is a disaster for Atlantic City. Does he have BKB? And just didn't get to use it? On Dragonite? Yeah, I just didn't expect that. This war just came down a little too slow to see what was up there. They were feeling so good because they found that Earth Spirit. They're like, oh, it's five versus four. We can go take the rest of this fight. But always got to be careful as you take fights away from the, the creeps against the Luna. The Eclipse and the Glaive bounces. That was just the perfect position for Shopify Rebellion. Yeah, that was really nice. They turn what was a potentially really bad situation into two great kills, another tier two tower, and more map control. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Oh, you know, I'm a little surprised. Well, hold on. I'm gonna find Fly. Quick, quick death toll kill. Um, I was gonna say, I'm a little surprised that Visage didn't go for more auras. He actually went for an Agonims, but he has a Nullifier queued up next, so his job is gonna be just hunt down the Tinker. And we win the fight once Tinker's out of it. That's a very cool idea. Yeah. I like it. I mean, it's very similar to how he played the Broodmother in a way, right? Like, he just yeah ha had, like, the ability to kind of, like, play in the webs and stuff. And then as soon as you'd see the Tinker, it was Nullifier and run at him. And this time, he's got Silent as the Grave as kind of, like, the way of playing through the trees, right? So, yeah, we usually just see more aura and group push type visages. But Amaterasu, being very experienced with the visage, I'm sure has... Uh... Recognize how we can have the most impact, which a lot of Tinker games do come down to killing Tinker. So this ags into the Nullifier. You'll have the help from Nyx. Yopaj can roll in on the Earth Spirit. A lot of good tools to keep Copy on his toes. Might need a BKB. It's currently queuing five levels of Dagon, but... Why not? Smoke up. Blink, Dragon Tail. They've got themselves the Nyx Assassin. Not the best kill, but they'll take it. And it looks like Shopify smoke up themselves. Maybe thinking of intercepting. You do need your Visage to get here, though, if you want to take this fight. Copy. Oh, he's not going to roll off. He sees it from downtown. Okay. It will cancel that teleport. And Blink instead. Now, Doom in the trees, top side. Does have his spells at the ready, but he's going to get found here by the Visage. He's going to be forced to BKB and try and run his way to his own high ground. And he destroyed. doesn't even get close. Great scouting from the side of Shopify to set that one up. And now with no Doom, no BKB, they're going to be able to kick back Yuba, who his BKB is not going to last very long at all either. You're just way too far behind. Yamato is just destroying your base. They were not expecting for this Luna to be doing so much damage, but she's already a strong hero, and you see how many auras she has. She's hitting for 400 damage right now. That's that's actually crazy. That's a lot more than I thought. Yeah, I, I don't know how you slow this down. Like You're going to need a Doom onto the Luna to kill her but they're not gonna give you that opportunity. You are down two full lanes of barracks now at 26 minutes. And this game just absolutely blown wide open by those two kills topside. Doom, he was waiting in the trees. They, they were planning to take that fight, but I guess a slight oversight in the, the scouting from the Chen creeps, but also two Invis heroes in Nyx and Visage. Maybe needed to be more in the base, uh, a bit safer positioning. Well, you're going to be stuck in the base now. Two lanes down. What's the comeback here? I mean, if you can drag this on long enough and March of the Machines is good at dealing with lanes, Eventually, you know, the scaling goes back around, but 
I don't think Shopify Rebellion is really going to wait that long. I think you're going to try to hold the map till the next Roche and just finish it off with that. He's going for a Lincolns on the, the Luna as well. So I'm not going to be too scared of getting doomed anymore once he finishes yeah. that. I think that's just such a good heads up play. Like, he doesn't even need BKB at this point, clearly. Nullifier is now done on your visage, so... This dude is very scary. See if they even feel the need to wait for the next Aegis. I mean, if you can find any big pick off, in particular the Tinker, uh, you're just going to go straight for the end. You're going to force that buyback. And if there is no buyback, you're just going to end the game at the tier fours with a Luna. They've smoked up looking for pretty much anything that they can find and it is going to end up being Lelis. <laughs> Almost two shot by the Luna. That Conda beam doing about half of his health quickly cleaned up by the Visage after that. And this will just be their uh, invitation to start chipping away at the high ground. Now Amaterasu is scouting on the backside. They do have a sentry which sees them for a second but Really good scouting here from this Visage Aghanim Scepter. Yeah, they don't feel the need to go too crazy. One kill, a little bit of poke. Already got half the tower. Don't need to dive. You just wait for the next pick off. You'll go finish the tower after that. It's a nice patient gameplay. They should have game one in the bag. You know, not to curse them, but this position's very strong for them, and they're just going to play it out safely. Your Dragonite needs a lot more items. Uh, he's working towards his Daedalus, which is nice, but that is like only part one. He needs attack speed after that. So he's got the AC queued up. You're just so far away from having that amount of, like the amount of damage that is necessary for him to output in these fights. And it's gonna kind of rely on your Doom actually getting the perfect Doom target, whether that's the Earth Spirit at the start of the fight or the Luna if they manage to break the Lincolns. Thing with Luna though, she doesn't care too much if she gets doomed, uh, especially if you've already used Eclipse. But let's say you don't use your spells, you still hit really hard, you still get the glaive bounces. So you can kind of just stand and fight Yeah. Uh, when you do get doomed. And maybe you'll fall because you can't heal, but you'll output so much damage while they're trying to focus you down that your team cleans up the rest of the fight. This smoke is everything, but it's being read pretty dang well by Shopify. They have the familiars. The Doom actually comes out. Onto what, though? Onto the Visage. Amaterasu. Okay, but he did... Wait, he got stone form off during the Doom somehow. He's going to continue to chase him, but the damage is not enough. Gunner can't finish the job, and they're all going to die. How does he stone form their Doom? I guess he was already using it. Wow, that hurts so bad. It wasted so much time. He lives because of that, and there's no buyback on the Doom. I mean, you don't even have Doom if you had it, so yeah, that should be it. I mean, there's one more Fortify. I don't think you can use it here. Maybe to save the Megas, since losing Megas is pretty much losing the game anyways. The Spike Carp is stunning up Yuma for the moment. The Chain Suns are there. Copy's trying to save him on the Tinker. I mean, he does a decent amount of damage, but the Mega Creeps, they're they are done. Uh, they're just going to focus up on the barracks here after that back door, or yeah, after the fortification comes out, and they just call the GG. They know this one's over. Game one will go to Shopify. Very nicely done. Good itemization from that Vistage. I, I would not have that Rider to go jungle and again for health stream, a very good game 
pick up a fast blink, and you know, we're talking about Pugna saving people, but what if Pugna is the one being needle killed first? Uh, just a quick, quick blink, black out, taking him out, out first, first spear rolling in, and he starts that, that fight in front, front of him, and then that black hole just walks in and, and grabs everybody. everybody. I don't, don't know, know if the hero is going to be that Atlantic City safe lane to really stop Enigma and Batrider from just getting really farmed. Another pause to kick this thing off. Uh, a little unfortunate, but something's going on. Uh, it's going to be game two of Shopify versus Atlantic City here, everybody, if you're just tuning in. It's a good time to be here. Let's take a look at some of these facets. Nothing really out of the ordinary for me. I think these are pretty much everything that we see. The only one that changes ever, I guess, is Crystal Maiden, either going for Frozen Expanse or uh, the regen one, this opting for Frozen Expanse. Now, now but, wins. Yeah, good stuff. Arsonist for Hellscream is a nice one. We're seeing more and more arsonists, I would say, over Stoked. Yeah, Hellscream is one of the the earlier adopters of it, from what I remember. Yeah. Or at least he's the one of the first people I saw, anyways. Um, gives you a lot of unexpected building damage. Yeah, it works well when you have like an offliner. Ones. Yeah, I was going to say, it works well when you have an offlaner who doesn't do building damage and you need to compensate for it, but it also works when you have an offlaner who brings a lot of building damage and you can just make it even more so. Yeah, maybe again, that idea, pushing the tempo really quickly before Medusa... Because I, I don't know her exact build this game, but it's almost always two items before you really want to see your Medusa join fights. At the pro level, of course, she joins a little sooner uh, every now and then. Come in, stone gaze, get out. But really, it's two, three items, and then the Medusa is online. Yeah. 30 seconds to battle. Smoked up on the top side, Atlantic City. Looking for some sort of jungle invade here. Aren't going to find it. Hoping to find the Shadow Fiend maybe sitting further back, but said they'll just take away the Watcher, and Chubfy will know exactly what's going on now. I like the aggressive ward placed bottom from Hellscream. Like this high ground ward is pretty sick because you know you're going to be doing a lot of uh, like kind of stacking and uh, for the Medusa, especially on those the two back camps. But if you actually push her out of the lane at all, she's going to be spending a lot of time farming, you know, down that side and. For now, they're just going to go ahead, aggressively cut this wave, try and block it as much as possible. Blood Grenade out from Fly, and I love a that Mystic idea. Snake. They're actually just going to clean up all of these Eidolines. This is honestly not bad for the side of Atlantic City. They're going to get a decent amount out of this. The problem is Yuma now needs to get to the wave before he starts losing too much XP. Yeah, mission accomplished in terms of getting the, the Equilibrium under the tower, but you do get 60 gold for for that. I guess you spend 50 gold on the Blood Grenade, but that's kind of a cool idea. I, I'm not I'm not actually sure if it's worth it or not, but I like seeing it. Yeah, Courier's done all over the place. I will say Yuma did hold his Venomous Volley shot for the Enigma, and it's set up for another big series of uh, hits into the Enigma. So... Took a lot of damage to do this. We'll see how much it ends up actually paying off, but for now, I think they're pretty okay with where the lane's at on Shopify. So they're just going to continue to regen up, and Yuma is struggling now thanks to the Bat Rider just constantly harassing him. Where are things going up here? Should mostly just be last hitting until you pick up a couple levels on. The Crystal Maiden, and then it becomes easier to set up multi raises. That's where we might see kills out for the side of Shopify. I think if you get a good dead shot, you can get kills sooner on Atlantic City, especially on this squishy Crystal Maiden. But, yeah, Absolutely. A good job of staying well in the back so that that does not happen. Actually, Lelis might have been the one baited in a little bit too far. No way. Ooh. He slips around that tree. 
Well, hold on, we're gonna see a play bottom lane as well, trying to get aggressive onto Yuma. They do manage to save him with the decrep, but they're very low on resources, and Hellscream is perfectly healthy. I don't miss. The mango's on the way for Fly. That'll be good for him, but also to keep your Medusa alive, you can force feed her. He should see that. Yeah, he does. Mid, maybe oh. going about as expected. Yeah, it is. It's going quite well for for the Earthshaker and <laughs> Yo Paj has resorted to not playing the lane, um, which we've seen a couple different times. Well, Ellis even coming to make sure he has to spend some extra time tanking creeps. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I don't think he wanted this creep wave to hit his tower, but here we are. I'll just clean these up. Actually, misses quite a few CS as a result. I mean, this is kind of what you want when you don't play a standard are like, uh, you're losing the standard lane. You do think make things messy, but this Ooh. is a lot of creeps and the aggressive fortify as well. That's really nice. Poppy's not gonna let it go. He's just gonna walk around at him, make sure that he's gonna lose whatever creeps he can force at the tower. <laughs> it's just hilarious watching the Earthshaker just slowly walk at him. They will be able to prevent the water rune as well which is quite nice. So Copy will grab that one. Yopaj will get bottom. But it's good stuff. Bound. All right. Well, in terms of the lanes, pretty quiet start for both teams. We've seen... You know, 20, like 20 kills by 8 minutes. We've seen like almost nothing happening early on. But for now, Copy... I, I don't know if Yopaj is just like trying to secure any CS and he's just getting completely zoned out, but... Takes a ton of damage for that attempt. And bottom lane. Speaking of damage, Fly in trouble. Five sticking eight palms up and Hellscream will finally grab the first blood and now Yuma in trouble as the Earth Spirit is here. They will dive, kick him out from under the tower. In comes the Shaker to try and save him, but it's just a double kill now. He does not mind. Hellscream is so, so happy about this exchange. They're going to continue the dive potentially. He can continue keeping these Napalm stacks going. Roll, going to get tanked there from Fly, but they just get the kill. They're just dying one by one. Fly, next on the chopping block. It's just a matter of time here. So many creeps to just tank this tower seemingly forever. As Fly will go down on Amaterasu now. Everyone is so low. They can't, I can't find believe any kills. This. Zero kills. Oh, he was just a bit low on Earthshaker coming in on that rotation. And they tried to do a bottle pass in the middle, which is why I think that was a really well-timed roll in to try to interrupt that. And so he just... Didn't have the mana to go for that Fissure combo. Otherwise, maybe you do find a kill. That completely recovered Earthshaker's game, which is the strength of this hero. If your lane is countered because you got picked too early, you don't need Magnetize to make plays. As soon as you just have a couple points in roll, that's it. That's all you need. Yopaj went from being almost a full level behind to a level in, like, three quarters of a level in front of Copy from that bottom play. Like, this is what happens every single time we see Yopaj play this hero, and now we're gonna see the Magnetize in the mid lane come out. The rotations are here, and Copy's game even more in shambles now. There's no way of really escaping this one. Hellscream should pick up his third kill of the game, is now Lelis, caught up from the Frostbite, and another kill going their way, six to zero. And it is, this is just the Earth Spirit classic, man. Yopaj has been doing so well. How many times have I seen the kills and then he's immediately head over to that Wisdom Rune? It, I think it's Atlantic, City's, Atlantic City's learned about this, though. So Gunner is here. 
He gets oh, it anyway. Tries to sidestep the roll, but too far from the rune because of that. Did they even get Hell Scream? Is the problem? No, he's out he's with so Firefly. Fast. Man, this really hurts. They're gonna Echo, Echo Slam on the side. You get a Crystal Maiden, and that is it. You would have rather saved the Echo for the the Ancient Stack at that point. Yeah, they're hoping to combo that maybe into that Shadow Fiend, but the rest of the team is still too far off to the left side. Yo, Paj, not slowing down anytime soon. He's managed to find Yuma in the bottom lane. Hellscream in as well. Amaterasu just trying to close the gap. Has the Black Hole, doesn't need it. Just he's getting range for the Malefus. And Yuma goes down once again. I thought Shopify Rebellion would go for a fast pace, but this is even faster than I thought. Already a 3k lead at 8 minutes, and this tier 1 should fall, bumping that gold lead even further. Poppy's dead. He has the urn, magnetize out. That's a quick kill again for Yopaj. 3-0 and 4. He's involved in 7 of the 8 kills by the 8 minute mark. And mind you, I think this game was 0 and 0 at like 4 minutes. It was a very slow start. Pop the early freezing field. He's level six already on this Crystal Maiden. He's just been involved in, was it, four kills and had some time in lanes. Also, double Wisdom Rune Steal again. I, how many times has that happened for Shopify? They, they're putting so much emphasis on those early Wisdom Runes and support to benefit off of that. Feels like they've put a lot of thought into how do you optimize a fast-paced draft. And we're seeing that really come to fruition in this this qualifiers. I feel like they go for the same thing every time. I mean, the heroes move around, but it's always a, uh, a draft that comes online pretty early. And maybe it looks close, but suddenly they hit some timings and then boom, the, the net worth changes by 10K in a few minutes. Bottom lane. The, I mean, the Enigma is not going to be under any pressure for quite some time. He's got his drums, his boots. He's just going to be hanging out, farming. I'm sure he's going to go for the Crimson Guard again this game, which is what he did in previous series. Yeah, maybe a... I wonder if a pipe first would be worth it. Medusa's not really going to join those early fights, and there's a lot of magic damage from the other heroes. But at some point, a Crimson Guard... Um, Definitely up to see. Bottom tower is under attack. Man, he's almost a thousand gold behind in the mid lane now on Copy Shaker. And we just go back five minutes. Earth Shaker was the one chasing Earth's spirit everywhere, not allowing him into the lane. How swiftly things have changed. They find these stacks and steal them too. I think you can use Freezing Field to take them if you want. The roll they into the top side. They're first. looking for Lelis. The calling definitely causing a little bit of problems, but dominating spree now for Hellscream. They're just going to steal the ancient stacks with Skem's freezing field. Oh, man. That is all of your recovery down the drain. And it's not getting any easier. As they find the Pugna, Lasso comes out. Fly. No chance of surviving. We're just seeing another massive XP difference between the supports again. Skem and Hellscream are level seven, almost level eight. And, you know, are they higher level than the Medusa at this point? They actually might be. Oh, that's, yes, it's very close. Uh, yeah. She is level eight, they're level seven. So if you find another kill, maybe you do surpass. Speaking of which, top lane. Ooh, nice kill from Gunner. Hellscream. Well, does he even get it? He will, but Yamato to finish the job here on the Shadow Fiend. Gets himself his third lasting presence stack after the rotation in the jungle there, so he's very happy to keep these going. Should lead to a pretty quick, quick tier one if he wants. The calling? Oh man, they just missed everything on the bottom lane, and Yopaz just gets a kill mid instead. Don't worry, his death totem is going to get that XP. 
Oh no, now the creeps are moving too far. Never mind. It's over. And this, I, I thought last game would be more like this one where they're just really far ahead early on, but this is way worse. 7,000 gold advantage here, just seven or just 12 minutes into the game. As they are just crushing all three lanes, it is not even close. And they're just going to look for, for mid tower here in a moment. Yuma trying to find scraps on the bottom side of the map, but. That series of bottom rotations when that Earth Spear was level 5 and came down and it led to three different kills or something. Uh, that's Those where four the kills. Yeah. Yeah, even more. Th that's where this game really changed. And I do think the last game, game one, could have been similar, but Atlantic City was much more careful through the early game. Maybe it was by nature their heroes. Uh, maybe they just didn't slip up on that kind of like keep going bottom and dying type thing. But. It could have ended up that way, but they were more careful. In this game, oops, slip-ups happen, but Shopify really pushing that, right? They, they're not also continuing to play safe. They realize how much stronger they are, and they are matching the tempo of how strong they are. Uh, looks like it is going to be pipe first on Amaterasu. And then maybe Crimson Guard later. Maybe you don't even need it. <laughs> This game might be over they, before. Yeah, I mean, that's a completed <laughs> vessel now on Yopaj, so... He did... He only has one stack left, but it's so easy for him to find, like, solo kills even at this point. Magnetize plus vessel will kill pretty much any hero he wants. Uh, and you still have a super farmed Enigma in the offlane. Another freezing I field just to cut creep love waves. Skem. Skem yeah. is living my dreams. <laughs> Zeus 5, Freezing Field for farm. He's doing it, man. And once again, we just get to watch Yamato just farm to his heart's content on the Shadow Fiend 2 0 1. Going towards the Sanjin Yasha next. He's big chilling. Children popped. Is under attack. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. Smoke to the bottom lane. Does Compi have his blink? Is that the idea here? He does. All right, they will just blink Echo immediately on top of the Enigma. The fear comes in as well. He's surviving for the moment, but he will finally go down. Same time, the blink reveal at least top. getting a big kill. It did cost you your tier two though, man. Oh, that is painful. They smoke top trying to find the Beastmaster, but I think they read that movement. He's already back home in his own triangle. All right, so something going the way of Atlantic City. Mm -hmm. Not easy, though, as Hellscream Hell also has a Blink Dagger on the position for Bat Rider with a lasso, and it's just going to pull in Copy here on the Shaker, who's going to have a real hard time getting away from this one. And, uh, well, oh, he turns it around. <laughs> okay. Level four enchant totem just dunks hell scream gets a 500 gold bounty for himself That is a very nice play from him yeah, Hell scream needed to be a little more careful chasing into those trees <laughs> where he lost sight yet uh, It does show the state of the game where hell scream can identify you know what? I'm pretty sure I can just solo kill the enemy mid and he was right He would have had that if he was just a bit more careful going into the tree line mm-hmm Top lane, they do have Roar on Gunner as well as the Aghanim Scepter, but it looks like they're looking to get aggressive themselves. They're bringing in some heroes. No lasso, but her spirit can very easily roam after get them in with his scam. Arcane Rune. Roche is an objective for both teams, surprisingly. It's just because you have the Aghanims on the Beastmaster. He can solo it if you ignore him for too long. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, they find Earthshaker again. Looks like Lullas will be next. God. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure he might just magnetize this. Oh, he doesn't actually have it yet. He will drop it. Yeah. There's no reason not to. It's an arcane rune. All he needs to do is just hit it one more time. 
Uh, he didn't vessel him for some reason. Lelis is going to live. Okay, a little bit of a mistake there from Yopaj. But... What can you do? At the same Roll time... from Gunner. Oh, oh. Finds a Crystal Maiden. Gets the kill. He's got a lot of stacks going on this... On these drums, but the... Yeah, the Black Hole comes in to shut that down. I'll scream, grabs the kill. Fly will be able to TP on out. You think you could kill that Muerta if you want to push harder, but you're winning. You don't know it's 9k, but you got a huge lead. So would one more support kill really change it? Not too much for you, but diving too hard and feeding some kills, right? that's that's where you throw the lead. Uh, so I can respect taking it uh, a little bit more safely. Come get Roche instead. Pretty early Roche uh, without having the Beastmaster, but you have just a ton of gold on your team. Yeah, throw out that freezing field. And he's outside the pit, so you can see people coming in. No, no Rampage Roche rampage. deals here. Yeah. Well, Smoke's gonna pop, looking in. They do manage to get the fear. It actually hits Yamato. The Roche is really low. Copy goes in, hits the Echo. Does he get the Aegis? He gets Malefist. No way. The Aegis still goes the way of Shopify. Oh, what a disaster. Roar out from Gunner. Can they bring down Yopaj on this Earth Spirit? They are trying, but he gets the kick roll away, and now a Requiem onto both supports. It's a disaster for Atlantic City. Gunner's going to get caught. The vessel's out. They just drag him back in, and guess what? Yamato's got four stacks of the Lasting Presence and just hit 15. It is time for your buildings to fall. You've already got the top lane pushing in. I'm pretty sure you can get this tier two. You're, oh, you're almost too early to steal the Tormentor and Wisdom Rune, but I, I think you could still just hold this area until then. Oh, that was so close. They almost... I was joking when I said you were going to come in and Rampage steal Roche, but actually it was quite close. Uh, but that Malefist saving the day, making sure Shadow Fiend still picks it up. Now he has all the confidence in the world to go make use of his four lasting presence stacks. Go hit some buildings. Or go straight back to farming. I mean, that, that too, that's fine. Radiant are scanning. Four stacks, a little longer. I think they're about to fade. Unless you can get actually one more kill right now. Uh, Roar might make some space. Yamato's trying to get close. Gunner in trouble. There's going to be the crat, the catch, though. They've got him. Just one more auto attack. Goes their way. Did he lose the stacks? He did. But he's got okay. two new ones, which got two is... two new ones, yeah. Going to be good enough to get another tier two right here, especially with the help of some Eidolons. He was trying to, to get farm. the last hits for himself, too, to grab that extra five damage per, you know, but... Ends up going the other, the other heroes. All right, now they're going to come steal the Tormentor. It's such a good idea to just take this away. It, like, both supports on Lennox City have decent enough shards, but let's see who gets it. All right. Also, <laughs> also pretty Not bad. Best. But uh, he does have Arsonist at least, so it could help potentially with some tower pushing. The important thing is that Atlantic City does not have that shard. Yeah. Uh, you, you can go back for your own at some point. Courier kill from oh, Copy. Copy. Can you get out of here? Do, oh, they may not they see him in the trees there. in time. Yeah, oh. they know he's there, but they can't get vision. That's cool. Good choice for a TP. All right, where's the Medusa at? She has her Manta, and she's about halfway to a butterfly. Still a long way to go before she is particularly scary. She needs to cut this next wave and then just leave, which it looks like that's what she's going to do. So cuts the wave. We'll TP back to the fountain. Try and slow down any of these pushes coming out from Shopify. They still have one more wave topside, though.
I think they would have learned their lesson from Apex Genesis in the last series where they had an early lead, but the enemy high ground was a bit scary and they pushed it a bit too far and it kept the game close and they ultimately lost. Now this time, I think they're gonna be much more careful about farming up, waiting for a good pickoff or building up a massive lead, which we're currently at 16K at 22 minutes. That's a really good lead. Uh, the only way you throw this is if you clump up on high ground and get at go. So, Gunner goes in, roars the Crystal Maiden thanks to his ward, but there is so many more heroes coming his way. He will finish off the Crystal Maiden for his efforts, but loses his life. Dude, he got 655 gold for the position 5 Crystal Maiden. That is pretty sick. Dude, have you seen Skem this game? He's farming That's up a true. storm, man. He's rich. Crystal is done now for the Shadow Fiend on his way to the Daedalus. 20 seconds left on the Aegis. He's just going to use that bad boy to regen some of his mana. I wonder if it could backfire having the banner against an Earthshaker. And your creeps aren't dying, so you build up <laughs> you a huge like wave on the and then you get echoed. Yeah, but you also got Eidolons. Yeah, you just gotta be careful of that. Ato Spear up onto the high ground. There's the echo. He just immediately pops the BKB, the black hole. The Requiem is there. They get the kill onto the Shaker. Radiance Courier has been killed. Uh, and they will the back Scotty away. Career. Oh my, that's the f entire Scotty. That's painful. Where did that die? I don't know. I think he TP'd in, so it probably took like a weird route. The dead shot idea is pretty good, but you'd need Medusa there for the extra damage. Uh, I think they got SF to about half health. Well. Half health is not enough. He's still got two lasting presence stacks. 24 souls to his name at the moment as he will finish off the tier three tower. And I think they're gonna back away now. They've got the structural damage. The earth shaker is respawning. Do not want to risk it. I just got an Amplified Damage. I didn't even see him grab this. He's got to be careful. L Scream. As well as Scam smoked up on the top side. They're he looking did. for him. There it is. The Blink Lasso. You've been delivered to the Shadow Fiend. Roar is out. Gunner will not make it out of this one. And another kill going the way of Shopify. I like this a lot from Shopify. This is this is the much more disciplined approach compared to earlier today. Shows they really learned their lesson from that loss. Just making yeah. sure, keep them trapped in their base, find the kills when they go too far. Oh, the roll just barely misses from Yopaj. All right. Still forces out the Stone out. Gaze, so. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Stone Gaze is down, that's kind of big. Oh my goodness, look at that range creep, or range tower health go down. Ooh. All right, first lane of barracks dead. They are at least not feeding a death right now because it would be a disaster to give them another lasting presence stack as it's getting ready to expire. But the cost is could potentially just be two lanes of barracks. Looks like Hellscream and Pugna are having some fun. Hellscream, a little bit more fun, it would seem. He gets himself another kill. It's copy has an Aghanim Scepter completed, but. What do you do? How, how do you just start the fight here? That's your last fortify. No creeps for a little bit. Or is your boss? Fear. They're holding them in place for now, but blank, echo, roar, everything. Here comes the black hole. He gets out with a BKB. They were waiting for the commitment and you get punished. That might be GG. Two dead without buyback and Yuma soon to follow. And there it is, game two goes to Shopify. Another beat down here as they want the sweep. 
That was a really nice bait from Shopify Rebellion. I think it was a bait. Uh, you know, intentional. Yeah, I think. You're not afraid of spiders. All right. Here we go. Game number three, Shopify. So close to punching their ticket to ESL on Bangkok, but they've still got to win this last game. Grandmaster Heroes galore in this lobby three on the side of Shopify. They've won. They've done it. If only that Brood that putting easy. the same series of webs out as he normally does. Yeah, you really don't use that much mana at the start. Actually, this web formation's a little different than what he's done in the past. He's evolving. Oh, he really does like feeding frenzy. Uh, the other one got nerfed. Yeah. A bit. And he's really good with his micro, so. It's a lot of value from that feeding frenzy, the stronger spider lane. Sentry just like barely off the mark. I think so. There's a dire. I mean, they have a ward up on the enemy high ground. Is it just not in range? I think so. I'm looking at it. It's at the very edge. So it either. Wow. I think it's out though. All right. Both teams able to defend their war, uh, their runes. Yep, just on the left side. Well, that's very lucky for Copy. He does not want to have to give up that ward position. Ooh, but he may, a little bit of an awkward block there, or lack of. Unless this is what he wanted. Don't know if that's the case though. Got the deny. That's what he wants. All right, it's exactly what he wanted. I take it all back. Well, you do have to be careful. Like, you don't deal well with creep, so usually you don't no. want it to, like, shove back too hard. You do have to be careful of that. Amaterasu. I'm low already, He's right off the so bat. so much damage from Fly. And there's a lot of magic damage in this lane. Shockwave, as well as the Frost Blast, is a lot to deal with. And the way that we saw the teams deal with Lich previously, like you said, was the Lion. Every time he'd walk up to the wave, he would just get Earth Spike mana drained. And suddenly, this Lich, who, like, yeah, he requires, once creeps die, he gets his mana back. But he just keeps getting mana drained and doesn't get to use any spells. Oh, copy. Careful, buddy. You are tanking the tower. He's so low. Yo, Posh. Does he He's get in? the headshots is the question. He does not. He's just dead. Yo, Posh gets first blood in mid. Question mark from copy himself. Oh, no. Um, That is not supposed to happen. That's putting it lightly. I mean, these last hits are also not what's supposed to happen. Okay, before people start flaming, I think it's like 5 a.m., 6 a.m. where Copy is. He's playing in the middle of the night because uh, I think he's over in Europe for this. So maybe maybe he's feeling a little bit tired, not playing his best, unfortunately. But the Sniper, like, you're supposed to swap these last hits and denies. And it's supposed yeah. to be even higher for Sniper right now. We've seen Pucks literally have five denies at like six minutes against the Sniper. Yeah, this is rough. He is 8-8 eight and eight on the puck. He has an early bottle and an early XP advantage now. Yeah, maybe the block at level 1 really hurt him more so than expected. That's true. I mean, I think ideally you do hold it like right by your own high ground so you can poke for free and then still go for denies. Yeah. When you're up on their half, it's more awkward. Dyer's courier has been killed. Oh, Scam's courier actually uh, doing a weird ro like roundabout way of getting to him, ends up losing it. Copy is so low in the mid lane again. 
Does he turn this around though? He's off the mark, but he's he trying to get the headshot. Oh my goodness. The RNG backs the other way. He's so back. Yo, Posh needs to do his own question mark now. <laughs> yeah, he's like, oopsie. I mean, here's the thing, right? Like, if Yopaj gets that kill, this game is so much harder for Atlantic City because suddenly your puck's gonna hit like level six when Sniper is barely five. Yeah, he still needs to be a little bit careful. Uh, he's still quite low health as Puck comes back. Looks like there is a salve on the way, so he's just gonna make sure he doesn't go too aggressive like right uh, now. Under the tower he goes. Oh, oh to my the goodness! A game of some sort. Oh no! Okay, Yopaj is now low, uh, but he has Puckish. He's gonna be full health. Yeah, Puckish plus bottle. Good in eight. And the water runes just spawned. Man, this is the most unorthodox Puck v Sniper ma lineup uh, matchup result. I don't know what you want to call it that I've seen in a while. These are not. These things are not supposed to happen here. Well, the side lanes are going okay. Uh, Yuma doing pretty well. Gunner's having a rougher time. He's having to do like creep cut and stuff. So actually, these last are a bit, bit deceptive. Uh, I think some of these are like the small camp, whereas Yamato looks like he's uh, he's getting some big creeps right there. All right. Well, yep. As as I said, Puck gonna be hitting six when he's barely level five on the sniper, and that's, I mean, that stuff's just not supposed to happen. Now Puck can rotate. We talked about how at five minutes, Earth Spirit in bad lanes, he starts rotating, looks for kills. He doesn't need his ult. But your Puck is actually level six at five minutes and will have coil, and he's going to put it to use immediately and find a kill onto Gunner. Gunner's already having a bit of a rough time. Yeah. All right, we're going to need to see some big rp combos from the magnus today if they want a chance I, okay let, you know, i'm not gonna get too grim two to three six minutes in at the same time though it's really not supposed to be going this way in the mid lane and that's that's the big worry oh, unlucky on that rune for atlantic city as well amplified damage over to yopaj They're gonna try and maybe invade the triangle here a little bit. They know Lelis is gonna be stacking to try and give them some form of recovery here. And they are just smoking directly into the triangle as a result. They know that this is coming, but Award will scout them. Lelis trying to get to safety, but he's a level three hoodwink versus an amplified damage, level seven puck. He's not making it out of this one. Just as the seven minute wisdom spawns, who's gonna get it? Gunner will, but he is gonna get coiled up here and Yopaj might just get himself another kill for his time. Like, all right, you get the wisdom rune this time, but I take your I take your life. And he's not done. Into the mid lane, getting aggressive. Okay, a little done. Um, You got your wisdom rune for the first time. But yep. it did cost you another core death. Not the best. All right, I want Tarantzi bottom lane skewered back, but he's fine, just playing in the trees, gonna make it back to his tower. And Sniper will have to cancel his TP. He's poking down the tower, at least, as Sniper typically would in this matchup. Shield rune secured by Hellscream. Copy. Oh, smart moves by copies. Yeah, but... Maybe, maybe they're... not enough? Oh, what is totally the enough. brood TP is a weird one. 
He's like, all right, I gotta go back bottom, guys, sorry. And they know, they're like, all right, where is he? He's gonna be making his way over. The assassinate comes out, they get the kill. I'm a little surprised to see the brood there. But I suppose, I mean, we see by Magnus and Lich already being partway, they thought there was a bigger rotation going on mid, so they wanted to be ready. High ground miss? No, nope, not lucky. All right. And that's going to be top tier tower going down. With the help of Pugna and Dragonite, it's very easy. Radiance top tower has fallen. Top tower down. You don't usually see that for Sand King too early because a lot of times you can just sandstorm the creeps down. Uh, and at least stall that out, but and this Dragonite's already five thousand net worth. Yeah, very young up here. Actually, what's he got on the courier? Because he he has he's a blink on pretty way. far though. Oh my he's... goodness, he's so far. Okay, fly Blink? bottom lane's gonna get caught here from the Dark Willow, and it's gonna be enough for Amaterasu to close the gap. And the Brood feasts gets himself a quick kill. They're going to smoke with a blink. Rotate mid. Looking for a copy kill, I imagine. On the 10-minute rune as well. This timing is so nice. They see... Oh, smoke. Oh, the blink dragon tail. Right on the money. Four heroes here to take down this copy sniper. They're just making such great rotations. And this honestly just keeps coming back to the fact that this sniper should be much further ahead of this puck. Puck should have like 3,000 net worth around this yeah. time, ideally. He should be in the Sand King situation, which Sand King's gonna die again. And th this is all of a snowball effect. Sand King's fir like real first death is from the rotation of the Puck to the top lane at like just over five minutes, which again, not really supposed to happen. Bottom lane, they're gonna be able to find Amaterasu here with that RP. In comes the Assassinate, that should finish the job. So Compi will get himself another kill. RP committed, but a worthwhile kill to slow down this brood mother, or at least give them something. Mm, he's going for Orchid first on Magnus. It is pretty good for him to be able to kill the supports, the puck. Well, with Gunner having a bad game, it means your initiations are really lacking for quite a while here. And yeah. it's going to be very hard to find a nice RP combo until you finish the blink. So if you're getting the Orchid, we're looking, I don't know, 17, 18 minutes, depending how good of a game he has going forward from here. I wonder if that's why the puck has put so much attention onto the sand king with it with the coils right like make sure to rotate top side and and slow him down could be gunner is gonna go for a blank first though so even though he is having a huff, tough time he is at least uh gonna get the blink not too late you know sometimes you see a different build from the sand kings and the blink is way later so if you can start finding some epicenter blinks, you got sharpshooter, you got chain frost, there is some good follow up from the supports. Maybe you can start finding some kills. Pull this back a little bit. Dragon Lance looks like it's pretty much done here on Sniper. So. Witchblade coming out now for Puck. We have the Yasha on the Broodmother as well. I'm just trying to think like what items are gonna change quite a bit here. You're not afraid of spiders, are you? I mean the Puck Witchblade is gonna be a massive problem for them. Yeah, armor's getting high. Early game, very low armor. Get poked down by sniper. At this point, you're going to have the mobility to get to the sniper. You got the armor to tank up. The sniper puck matchup, it's supposed to be sniper stomps the lane, puck wins late game. So when puck 
wins the lane. I, you, there's no benefit. Where's the benefit to this hero? All right, back into the game we go as the pause is over with. It's not as... The thing is, it's it's a 2k gold advantage now for Shopify. Last game, it was far worse. Your Magnus is still farming. Your Sniper is kind of keeping with it. We'll see what they end up doing, uh, if they can actually pick up some big items here anytime soon. I, I think you're right that the, the Blink Dagger on the Sand King is kind of the main one that they need to, they need very quickly. Yopash. He should be fine. They know that RP. Nice moves. Yeah, the Orchid is about 200 gold off. So with this Creep Wave, you won't be able to do that again. You have to be a bit, bit careful on this puck. At least until you pick up some kind of dispel. Another pause, huh? Okay. Dude, what has been going on in this series? Ah, we've also been having Discord issues. Yeah, Discord has been having some massive problems this weekend. The whole platform went down yesterday for like 10 minutes. Uh, and yeah, we've been having issues today as well, but I guess we're not alone in that. Let's see, 13 minutes. Uh, Shopify's been putting a lot of emphasis on wisdom runes. I wonder if they'll try to make a play around that. I believe, what is this on the way? Mage Slayer is done on the Dragonite. It's on the way. Yeah. A lot of that's fighting a big power one. around that. I find it interesting Amaterasu is getting the, uh, the Manta. I thought he might do the auras for his team. I mean, it is a good Manta game, but yeah, you're right. I also thought he might be going for some auras or something. Who smoked for... Atlantic City. I don't know why it took me so long to process. Um... Now, they do have the Orchid on Magnus. Maybe they're looking to make a play with that as well. You really do. You need a combo. I, I don't think we've seen it yet. Like the RP, Chain Frost, all of that. It's a very strong combo in the early game. If you can land it. <laughs> but that's, you know, you got to get something with it. It's going to drop off the later the game goes. Chain Frost is going to get worse and worse as BKBs, Four Staffs, Blinks all come out. It becomes very hard to get a good Chain Frost. Which, fortunately, eventually you do get the shard. You will always have the RP, so uh, I should be able to get something. But the early game is the best for it. All right, unpaused. We're back into the action here. As the smoke. They're looking for the, the mid lane in here, but they will see Hellscream coming in, as well as maybe the Pugna. The question is, can they get some of this? Skewers up onto the high ground. The Orc gets out, but he gets the Shadow Realm off. Yopaj will get caught from the Blink Stun. The Bushwhack comes out in time. The first damage, it's there. That's a big kill. Almost 900 gold going to the side of Atlantic City. As they get the mid uh, pressure as well. He didn't that Blink reveal use... paying off. Yeah, and you didn't actually use RP, so you can maybe keep going. Although you did use Chain Frost to finish that puck kill. That is a lot of their early game damage. Maybe ah, it feels weird to wait for that when you have RP, but maybe you have to. Uh, seems like it. Yuma's already gone to the bot lane. I feel like with Sand King and Sniper, they could bring the heroes. 
Thinking of Sand King top lane, he is underneath a ward century without knowing. So he needs to be a little bit careful here. Yamato goes in, gets the blink, and good night, Gunner. Not an observer you're expecting at this time, but that kill right there is exactly why they place it. Bad intel. Got Chain Frost in 15. They want to try to protect their own triangle. This is a really good kill if they can find it. They will get their hands on to Yamato's Dragon Knight. They should have plenty of damage to finish the job. And Gunner with a blink epicenter will find Scam as well on the backside. That's a quick two kills. I think Shopify were not expecting that rotation. It will got the RP as well. <laughs> Eventually this will get used in a kill. It is giving a lot of space to the Broodmother, though. Her net worth has been shooting up. They're just playing with the Orchid. That's all they care about. They're looking for Yopaj here. He's going to be able to get the silence, maybe. No, he's out for now. Down to the low ground, but... A little bit of vision here onto Dark Willow. She's going to try and make the play here with her own Bedlam, but Hellscream in some trouble. Orchid will stop Yopaj from entering the fray as Fly. Fading some time here, thanks to this... Frost Shield, and there's the RP from Yuma. Pulls them back into the hands of Copy, and they will get themselves that Broodmother as well. Yopaj scan going in aggressively. They will be able to hold off for now. A two for one. As Atlantic City are crawling their ways back into this game. They're trying their best, making use of these, these powerful early game abilities, and they will now have the blink on the Magnus, so it's going to become a lot easier. He can blink Orchid, blink RP, combo that with the, the Borrow Strike. So, so far, successful in finding these small fights. Let's see if they can find anything bigger. Up will be a great target. They might come they're less since they saw that Dragonite, but they, they really want Yopaj. Yeah, they're just they're really trying to get as much value out of this Orchid as possible from Yuma. They know he would have come to the right side. The question is, will they get a glimpse of vision? You need Gunner to set up the stun, follow it up with the Orchid, but they won't know exactly where he is. There it is. The Orchid in the blink reveal. Off the mark, though, uh... with the Sharpshooter, and it might give him some time to survive. Yopaj! Sharpshooter is coming in. They get the kill. A little okay, okay. bit of a mistake there, but they do manage to get the kill. The orc or the Yules is uh, an absolute necessity for Yopaj now that he is having to deal with this quick orchid. Yeah. Uh, for okay. Fortunately, they had the kill. Right. Get the mistakes out of the way. Uh, but you'll need to be clean on the combo to kill Puck going forward. You have to successfully chain stun him. Especially now that he's got the Yules. I mean, we're back to a pretty much even game here in the trees. They are going to be able to find Hellscream. Sharpshooter also going to reveal Yamato, who takes a pretty big amount of damage. And Yuma is just going to drop the RP, but he's stuck inside the Brambles, the Fireball, everything. He cannot get out. And now Copy, he's going to come from a Terrorize. Amatrasi is just going to eat right through him. Two supports left, and it's just... A feeding frenzy for this brood. Mother Yamato goes in. Nice stun here onto the Dragon Knight. The damage from this brood is overwhelming. Three dead now behind the Tier 2 tower. Starting to see why she wanted to build like a carry. Yeah. There's free reign in this fight when she finds the sniper and she destroyed him. Dude, the Dragon Knight going for fireball early is wild. I, I don't really see people do this that often. True. I guess the extra mana from the Mage Slayer does help you use Fireball as a farming tool. Though, 
You don't usually need that because you're the, the fire dragon. I'm not sure. I guess when you get coiled, drop that fireball. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Like they were in the trees, they were stuck around brambles, fireball, and the mage slayer just burning everyone down. Like that was, that was cool. I mean, this game was very close just a moment ago, but it's suddenly a 6,000 gold advantage for Shopify. They've lost the tier two tower in the bottom lane now, thanks to this broodmother who's just going to continue to threaten the high ground. And you're going to have to respond. Puck going to come over from the right side. Look for an opening. Gets the coil here onto the Sand King. They do have detection. Bushwhack will connect and slow them down for now. He's going to blink up to the high ground. The question is, can you stop the aggression? They do have RP in six seconds. They're smoking back into this. Rude's starting to hit bot with these spiders. You're going to know something's going on when no one defends it. Everyone's just in full retreat mode. If yeah, you're not protecting know. your tier three, you've got to be in the middle of a smoke or a roach attempt. There, uh, Tower's yeah. almost halfway dead. Not going to make it. Yeah, Gunner can sit here and clear up these all day, but the damage is done. The smoke does not connect. You lose half the tier three tower. And Broodmother still just farming across the map. They're going to try Wisdom and clean up the Tormentor. Dude, that's crazy. I can't believe that was still there. I mean, you've had the Broodmother parked bottom, so Atlantic City is never able to get over to this half. Both teams will take their Tormentor, it looks like. Fly, falling a little bit too low for his own liking. Uh, Skem gets his, not a great one, but Lelis gets the Boomerang, which is quite nice. I think maybe you're hoping for the Shard on the Lich this game so that you can actually use your like Chain Frost kill. a little more easily. I guess what yeah, you do hit will be like stronger it. now, thanks to the Boomerang. You know, I guess if you trust the RP, maybe that is better, right? You get a big RP into Boomerang, Epi, Chain Frost. That's like, that's the dream combo right there. All right, we saw this earlier. Walk into Roche Pit Rampage. Get in there. Get your RP. Beating He's Frenzy's quite good at dealing with Roche now that I think about it. That's a cool, uh, another cool usage of it. And now, with Aegis for the Dragon Knight, they do control this whole bottom side of the map. Atlantic City's got to get this top lane pushed in. They got to get this tier one. They should be able to, but it's it's just farming time for Shopify. Yes, they have Aegis, but they're trying to finish up this BKB now on the way for Dragon Knight. Looks like the Phylactery also on the way for Broodmother. Any other big items? Oh, looks like they have what they need. There's a smoke up. Let me see if they can find any pickoffs. Don't forget that bottom tower is already half dead. So if you find a good fight, you can actually just head bottom. Oh my gosh, it never dies. The barrier's never gonna die because of the spiders. <laughs> That's true. It's Look at very... the duration on it. Look at it. <laughs> I actually didn't even realize he went. Uh... It's gonna last for like 50 seconds. Oh, top Yuma's dying. Okay. Bringing us away from our excitement. I I kind of forgot about this that he went growing cold because of the brood mother. Is it still on the tower in the bottom lane actually? Yes. <laughs> oh, it's getting Dude, refreshed by new creeps walking in. It just in. keeps getting refreshed. This is hilarious. I think it's about to fade now, though. Yeah, it's finally going to fade. I mean, that was like a, a minute-long frost shield on a tower. Yeah, I saw it on the tower. And I'm like, that looks like it's lasting too long. And I saw his facet. I'm like, oh, my goodness. The spiders just basically keep this thing for eternity. Makes sense because you're, one, you're dealing with a brood mother, So you don't want your spiderlings or you don't want your ult to be destroyed by spiderlings. But two, you have the RP, so you're trusting that he's gonna pull them together and you don't have to worry about the like sticking to a hero for a few seconds stuff with the other facet. Let's <laughs> see if that shield has any other cool interactions later on. 
That's definitely going to be funny. If that happens in like a fight and he throws this in on like a Magnus or a Sand King as they go in and he just like cleaves all the spiders immediately, they'll just have a frost shield for like a minute in the fight. I want to see that happen like really badly. Mid lane, Yopaj will secure the tower. Nicely done. And suddenly, tier two top, the only surviving outer tower here for Atlantic City. As the slow bleed continues for Shopify. Ooh, they're looking for the Sand King. They will find him underneath the tower. He's going to pop the Bloodstone to try and keep himself alive, but there is too much, too much damage. Lines being drawn everywhere on the map. It's a prediction from Shopify that they're going to try to push out mid or bottom and they want to go cut them off, get another kill. I think is what what I'm interpreting from these caveman drawings. <laughs> Should have studied hieroglyphics, man. I don't know. Shoot, Dota players don't know how to type. Just draw pictures. Brood's coming here on their own. They might be able to find a Brood kill. Get that Chain Frost that would going! be big. Oh, the Chain Frost was not sent first. And Omicron's just gonna BKB, turn it around onto Yuma. And now looking for Fly. He still does a lot of damage. Chain Frost is out. The Sinister Gaze. But he is safe. The BKB on the Brood Mother lasted just long enough. And now Yopaj is here to clean up, looking for Fly on the Lich. And he's gonna get this one pretty easily. They don't quite have the damage follow-up. He still doesn't have the shard on Lich, so even when there is a solo RP on the Brood, you can't, you can't you just, just drop the Chain Frost for, yeah, like a thousand damage, let's say, before the BKB comes out. Uh, very helpful in finding that solo kill without that uh, damage. Coil out once again. He's got a Yules this time, but he's going to fall into the Fireball and a Bramble waiting for him. Mid lane. I really... And we'll get the Pugna. I've got that. Worth news, about Ricky. the same amount of gold. We're not going to get to see the infinite Frost Shield because Yamato, he's done with his Nullifier. He's just going to dispel it. Oh. <laughs> Why is he ruining our fun? You can't nullify a tower. You can't nullify Oh, that's a true. Tower. That's true. Okay, if they use it on the tower, it could still work. But protecting your uh, your heroes like the the initiating Magnus and Sand King or the sniper who's being dove that will not work. I'm just saying, if they frost shield him as he blinked in bottom, that would have been like a 30 or 40 second long frost shield, which would have lasted as they watched Brood walk away from them. <laughs> That's it's right. True, but I don't know. That's just a fun interaction that, I, you know, it, that's the thing about Dodo's interactions. It's always really funny. There's like a weird interaction between Magnetize and Silencer and Broodmother right now where you can one shot Broodmother with a Magnetize. That one's really good. I didn't know that one. Yeah. Basically, if like a bunch of spiders get hit from the Magnetize and he silences them all, it reflects the Magnetize onto the Broodmother as well. And Silencer's passive just deals like 4,000 damage a second. It's very funny. Sounds funny. But What's then you have a silencer is... on your team and you lose, so. That's bad. true. <laughs> These illusions. <laughs> you he just keeps missing. Your mouth. Yeah. I mean, he keeps sending spiders and illusions at that tower. It's down to a fourth of its health. He's slowly going to get it. Wow, max efficiency farming down here. It's looking very good for Shopify. Again, very patient, not forcing it too quickly. Just rat it down with summons. Wait for the Roches. And I really don't know what the answer to that is for Atlantic City. I mean, they try to find smokes like they are now. And that's about it. But the thing is, when you're stuck in your base, it's a little obvious when smokes happen. For example, top lane being pushed in. And why bottom. Is one defending it? They just why know exactly what's happening. Tower? And they just zoom right to the towers. Bottom lane tier three, it's gonna go down here in just a second. Top lane tier three being sieged by the Dragon Knight. And they just do not find their opening. Shopify is giving them nothing. This is 
very well done by Shopify. Slow and methodical. Well, Roche, we'll see if it's going to be a long or short spawn. All right, Dragon Tail right here up. has caught the Magnus. We've seen this before. You walk high ground, you get punished. Big epicenter from Gunner. Yamato with this BKB should be able to just walk this one away, but the damage being done in mid lane as Amaterasu just cleans up the sniper. RP still available if they can find an opening, but Link from Gunner to try and make some space here. And two for one at the moment, but this Broodmother is so scary. They need the greatest RP in the world, and Shopify is just being so smart to not give it to them. They're yeah. pushing multiple lanes at once, sending in illusions, blasting with Pugna. Hey, Gunner's just dead. I mean, Puck has just been constantly poking him. He also picks up a Nemesis Curse as well, just so he has extra single target burst, and Makanda really just adding insult to injury. The Yules was ready. Yopaj knew, and now they turn it around. Magnus forced a BKB to get out of this one. It is just such a disaster here for Atlantic City. Everything going Shopify's way. They've just been playing so clean. Ooh, smoking in. There's no tower. Ooh. Fast reaction Blink dodge times. to the Dragon Tail. Very, very essential. But Puck with a three-hero coil. And it's going to be snapped by everybody. Trapped outside the Tier 4 as you lose the Magnus. Without buyback, Copy just trying to stand his ground and do it again. But that honestly might seal the fate of Atlantic City. You need that RP to reposition Shopify here. You don't know there's no Magnus buyback? So I think that's why Shopify is playing it safe. Big epicenter from Gunner, but the damage, it's just not there. He's still got the BKB to turn around and Yamato just deals so much damage. Yopaj on the backside, eating through everybody. The chain frost out the last ditch effort, but five heroes dead on the side of Atlantic City. Spells GG and Shopify gets the clean sweep. And the first time they've beaten this stack in, an op in, a, in a qualifier in eight, freaking months man congratulations to them yeah they're gonna be hyped about that i okay to be fair this is a different